Hello and welcome or welcome back to the Dandelion Diaries. Today I'm going to be kind of walking through my garden planner slash showing you how I use it. Um, yeah, so this is a Hobonichi Weeks in the bunnies cover with a clear cover on cover on top. It's just to help protect it um, from the weather because sometimes I do take this outside uh, into the garden. So yeah. If you're interested in pictures of my garden, I do have an Instagram where I post in my story sometimes of any flowers or vegetables that I'm growing, so feel free to follow me over there if you're interested in photos of my garden. But in the beginning, I basically just did two deco pages. Um, disclaimer, all of the deco in here is pretty much Coffee Monsters Co. or Sterling Ink or random stickers that I had from my mom or whatever. So it's not really super exciting in terms of a bunch of different shops or anything. I just really like Sterling Ink, I really like Coffee Monsters Co. And I just stick with them because I know I'm getting good quality product. And yeah. In the beginning, I do have a quote here. It says, we might think we are nurturing our garden, but of course it's our garden that is really nurturing us. And it's by Jenny, I think it's Unglo. I can't read my own handwriting, <laughs> but it's a really good quote, and actually my mom sent me that a long time ago, and I just, it stuck with me. The front page here, I just did a washi dashboard. It, I kind of went over this in my flip through for May, so I'm not going to do a whole lot here, and then in the beginning, I did a precipitation tracker. So this is really when the planner kind of starts, so I'm going to zoom you guys in to kind of show you my process here. So I'm only going to show the first half of the year because we're only in June right now, but this is 2022 over here and then this is 2023 and then the Hobonichi comes with 2024 as well. So I made a key, so I like to track when my last spring frost is, when my first fall frost is, if it rains or if it snows. I do live in the south so I don't really get a lot of snow but we do get some. So I'll use 2022 as an example. So February it snows for us in general and then in March is when our, fro our last frost is so that's when I can start planting stuff in the ground. In fall usually November is our last frost or our first frost so my growing window is between March and November usually so I can grow all of these months and I feel very lucky that I live in a place that I can do that. So that being said when we move into 2023 I have to guesstimate when my first frost or when my last frost is and then when my first frost is down here. So I basically will go to the farmer's almanac and put in first and last and that way I can kind of see a general window of when I need to start planting seeds in my garden room, when I can plant outside, when I can harvest, etc. And this just gives me a good idea on a full calendar view of what that looks like. The precipitation I track because if it's really dry one year, I want to know that. So last year, you can see here, we had no precipitation whatsoever in July. No snow, no rain, no nothing. It was just dry the entire month, which can be very damaging to plants if you don't give them enough water. So if I'm not watering regularly, especially in the summertime when it's hot here, I could lose my garden. So I like to keep track of this because this year, if we have the same dry spell again for the entire month of July, I know that I need to budget a higher water bill for that month in general. So that's kind of like how I use the front pages for the, I use it as like the precipitation tracker. And then I just have the sticky note in here because I use the zig dot markers and I'm, I'm quick. So I'll dot and then I'll put this on top of it and then I don't have to worry about it bleeding onto the page next to it since this is the crinkly tomoe river paper. This spread is the, I guess, index, uh, track yearly tracker, whatever you want to call it. I mainly have used this as a temperature tracker for two years now, and I love it. I am a very colorful person, so I made like a little rainbow here um, at the top, so it shows like the coldest being the silver color, and then it just gets warmer basically until bright yellow when it's over 96 degrees. We haven't had any of those days yet, thank goodness, just mainly in the 80s right now in May and June, which is pretty common for us where I live. I do like to keep these year after year, and it's really cool to kind of see a comparison of how it looks um, based on the colors. And I did change the color scheme for this year, which I'm kind of bummed about since it won't look the same as last, but 
it's okay. I still like how I can see every day the high and low temperature in a color scheme and visually see if we're getting warmer, colder, whatever. This is a piece of clear acetate that came with the bunnies planner. So when I bought the planner, it came with this little clear piece on each side to help protect the fabric in like the packaging. So I just cut it down to size and inserted it in. So that way it again protects each side of the paper from the dots that I placed down. And when we get to July, I'll just flip it over to this side. So that way it's the opposite. This is a magnetic bookmark from the Coffee Monsters Co. that was part of her advent this year. Next, let's move on into the monthlies. I'll go ahead and show you May too, but this is what a monthly kind of looks like at the beginning. Um, we are currently on Tuesday the 6th, but I usually decorate it a little bit just because it makes it fun to look at. This is what a blank spread looks like completely, which I haven't done anything with. But every day I put in a little snippet of what happened, if it's either garden related, pet related, chicken related, whatever. I also track the moon phases. Um, if you didn't know, you can actually plant by the moon and it makes a difference in how your garden grows because of the water flow in the earth is affected by the moon's water pool gravity science. It's really cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, not a whole lot happening in June so far. I have been able to harvest my cucumbers or start harvesting them. And then we did move our chicken coop on the first. And then at the bottom here, I do have a reminder to myself that our chickens are finally going to be old enough to start laying eggs for us. So I need to be on the lookout for eggs. But this is pretty much what a blank monthly would look like. A filled in monthly looks more like this, which again was in my May flip through video. I usually just write down a simple, you know, snippet of what happened on that day, anything exciting um, or detrimental, like this day we lost one of our chickens. This day, the chickens destroyed the garden, so, well, my herb garden. But this is kind of what a filled-in one would look like. It's just little snapshot snapshots. I don't use the monthlies very often um, for planning. It's just more of memory keeping, I guess, for my monthly pages. And again... This is just to help with the transfer of ink from side to side because Tomoe River paper dries really slowly and I like to use a lot of colorful pens. Moving on into the weeklies. This is the current week we are on. I like to do my weather tracker here on the side, a task list, a little routine tracker which tells me if I've watered, weeded, fed the chickens, harvested anything, etc. And then I have a master list of all the things that I need to get done for the week. Or if I don't get them done this week, I can push them till next week. It's just like a running to do list, honestly. And it does change um, depending on which week and length and things like that. So I did start doing this on um, what is this week 21, where I wrote the snippet in the week itself, but I ended up reverting back to my old method, which I'll get to in a little bit. But this is essentially what I would like to be able to do is put the snippet on the week itself. But if the master list is too long or I end up having too many things to do, then I have to push it towards the back. So yeah, weeks are pretty much just task lists, anything I have to get done, um, minor notes, things like that. And again, loose leaf for transferring of papers. I'm going to go over some of the notes section with you guys. I'm not really comfortable sharing everything just because this is pretty personal. As in a garden planner, I don't want to share too much. Um, this is the internet. But I will share kind of what my notes pages look like in my index. And then I'll flip through some of my note pages, just not all of them. So this is what my kind of sections are broken up into so the first few pages I have books to review and that's so I can have an idea of the books that I've read on gardening books that I've read on homesteading or taking care of chickens and I can review those either on where I purchase them like Amazon any kind of specific website and that way other people can read the review and get an idea of if that book was worth it to them based on their area etc it's just kind of a thing I like to do same thing goes for my second section, which is about products to review. If I use anything new that I really liked, like we found a chicken heater this year that I really liked. And we also found chick feeders that were able to use glass jars in, which I really liked. So I want to make sure I leave product reviews on those. So it helps other people as well. The third section I have is all about recipes. And these are recipes specifically for what I can use with what I'm growing in my garden. So like a pickle recipe, tomato salsa, 
if I want to use anything for my sunflowers, make some roasted sunflower seeds. I have tomatillos, so I want to make sure I have a salsa verde recipe in here. It's just kind of a fun way for me to come up with ideas of what I'm growing, like what to use with what I'm growing. And yeah, and yeah, that's probably the simplest way to put it. And then the next section I'll go ahead and take you to is the things to grow in 2023. So this is basically a snapshot of anything I could possibly grow and then what I did grow for this month of this year. All of the deco on these pages is pretty much the Coffee Monsters Co. with the exception of some of these little clear uh, PET stickers that my mom gave me. I have no idea where they're from. For the page setup, the left page is a master list of anything and everything I could possibly grow from seeds starting indoors, direct seeding into the ground, or transplants outside. Since I do live in a milder climate, I can grow pretty much year round, like I said in the beginning, with the exception of usually February is when it gets really cold here. But I basically color code uh, three different colors for each individual type of planting. So blue, for instance, on this month is things I could start indoors as seeds. So I have bok choy, broccoli, collards, pretty much anything in my brassica family. For direct seeding, I can do anything like lettuce, carrots. I can start my peas outside this time. Spinach is a really good one to start in January. We go through so much spinach. And then for transplanting, this would be anything that I had started basically in November or December indoors or I purchased at the store and can transplant out. And this would also be like your brassicas, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflowers, things like that. On the right page is what I have actually planted out or the plan of planting out. So for instance, in January is usually when I start all of my seeds indoors for my tomatoes, my peppers, and then my herbs, just because those are usually warmer climate and they have to mature a few months before I put them in the ground before they tend to take off. So I, I'd like to put down the type or variety of tomato or plant and then the number I plan on planting out. I did change this in a few months and I'll show you what that looks like. This is what February is, this is what March is, and then this is what April is. So in April is when I started to change what my layout looked like and instead I just put the date and then what I did versus doing the number of whatever it was I had planted or um, yeah, the number of whatever it was I planted. And then I also started indicating apparently in March what I planted outdoors versus what I planted inside, which is kind of nice to see. I probably should continue doing that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is April. And then usually I stop planting around April, May, June, like the second quarter of the year because I the summer gets really hot and I don't want to plant anything when it's super, super hot. May, not a whole lot happened. I just was able to harvest some potatoes which was super fun if you saw that on my Instagram and then I replanted some of our peppers we had a really big problem with cutworms this year so the peppers all died and they yeah I just they never came back which is kind of disappointing but it's okay and then to plant for June I haven't really planted anything out I do plan on planting some watermelons but I do want to continue to harvest my cucumbers which is what all of this is the next section of the planner note pages are the ones I'm not super willing to share. Um, I'll share a few of them with you. I'll share these two. But the rest of these are basically the same thing. Um, it's basically weekly sh snapshots. So it's like a journal entry per week, essentially, of what happened with the garden, the chickens, dogs, if we had any issues with the lawn, trees, um, clearing of land, whatever so in the beginning I like in the beginning of the year I just did little snippets like this and then so far the length of the journal entries have increased which I think is really common if you journal you start off really small and then you just start writing more and more and more as stuff pours out of your brain um, but this helps me keep track of what happens throughout the year so I can look back on it next year if I have a similar problem and this also helps me kind of remember things that happened in the garden to watch for again for the next gardening season. The next section is the favorites section on the Hobonichi Weeks. And this is basically where I broke it up into different sections of spring, summer, autumn, and winter of what I planted to harvest and the yield. 
So I, like I said, I haven't really harvested too much yet, but I did get to harvest my potatoes and they were the Yukon Gold variety and I got six pounds, which was pretty standard considering I had them in a pretty small pot and I didn't plant very many of them. As for cucumbers, I'm just counting them by number right now because they are growing at different stages, but I've, I've actually harvested like, I think six cucumbers. They're like about this big now. I try to harvest them when they're a good size for the pickles and then also for cutting like for salads um yeah I lost my train of thought but anyways this is kind of what this looks like and I hope at the end of the year I will have this filled out this is my first year doing this and honestly it's kind of hard to remember to fill it out but it is okay the next section I'm not going to share but the last section is the 365 checkoff and this is the I've just been using this as if I spent 20 minutes outside or not and this just helps me see how long I'm spending in the garden. Because if I'm just going out there, checking it and leaving, that's not 20 minutes. I need to be spending at least 20 minutes in there checking for pests, checking for produce, checking for any kind of problem or um, anything that's really good. If there was any kind of detrimental loss, uh, if the chickens got in the garden, whatever. I need to make sure that I'm spending enough time out there to understand what's happening in my space to make sure I can better take care of it. So I like to make sure that I'm out there for at least 20 minutes. And that's what I use there. That is pretty much it for the garden planner itself. I hope this was helpful. I did have a few requests on how I use my garden planner and... That's why I made this video. So let me know if you requested this, what you think about it in the comments, because I love having a garden planner and this is my second or third year having one and I'm definitely having one forever. So it, it's just really nice to keep track of, but let me know what you think. If you're interested in more content from me, as I've said throughout the video, please follow me over on Instagram. I share pictures of my garden. I share daily spreads, weekly spreads and monthly spreads and any kind of fun fountain pen stuff. Cause I do like fountain pens, but Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate your support. And I will see you guys in the next one.